Have you ever walked into a room and forgotten why you went in there? Have you ever opened the refrigerator door and thought, what was I looking for? I completely understand. And I have been there more than once. And a lot of times we think it's just menopause. Well, we're getting older. That's just what has to happen. But guess what? It may not be menopause and it may not just have to happen. It may be some of the things that you're doing in your life that may be causing this or at least helping it along a little. What if I could share with you some really easy things that you can do to maybe help prevent brain fog and to slow down the aging process in our brain and help you have better cognitive function. Wouldn't that be great? Today, I'm going to share with you five different things that you can do to improve your brain health, have better memory, get you some improvement on that brain fog. Number one, and it's going to be number one a lot. In a lot of symptoms that we have, we are dehydrated. Now, this is not the case for everybody. There's a lot of things that go into hydration for the body. But number one is drinking enough water. And you may wonder, well, how much water do I need to drink? Half your body weight converted to ounces. So if you weighed 200 pounds, that would be 100 ounces of water a day is what is recommended by professionals to keep the body hydrated. There are even instances that you may be taking certain prescription medications, or you may be overweight in which you need to drink even more. There are little things that you can do to help absorb that water better when you drink it. One of the things that a lot of people do that give them great results for absorbing water is putting just a tiny bit of sea salt inside of their water. What this can do is help the water to absorb into the cells a little bit better. If you feel a little bloated when you drink a big glass of water, maybe every once in a while, just sprinkle a little bit of sea salt. And I say a little, you don't want to put a teaspoon of sea salt in there. You'd be miserable. It's a terrible experience. But if you put a little bit in your water, maybe every other bottle of water or every other time you refill your glass with water, just sprinkle a little bit of sea salt in there. Make sure it's a natural sea salt not an iodized table salt. Maybe you need to add a mineral complex. I put liquid minerals inside of my water, but every other two or three glasses. So maybe think about, am I drinking enough water? Am I absorbing it? Number two is something not only for brain health, but also helping you absorb when you drink water, and that is fish oil. Fish oil helps hydrate the skin, the muscles, the organs, the hair, Every part of your body can benefit from some type of a fish or omega-3. You can get your omega-3 in your diet. You can get your fish oil from eating fish. It's been said that even if you eat fish a few times a week, you're going to notice some health benefit. The brain is about 60 to 70% water and the fish oil is so helpful for concentration because it helps the brain retain that water. Fish oil is a wonderful thing to take if you're experiencing a little bit of brain fog. Number three, I want to mention a couple of different supplements. One of those two supplements, it's very difficult to get in your diet because its source is from jellyfish. It's called Provagen. It has been really touted for the fact that it can bind with certain things in the brain and remove them. Things that are maybe causing some blanking, or some hiccups in the way the neurotransmitters connect. It's way more fancy than I know what to say, but it has shown to be very beneficial for people that are really struggling with memory specifically. I really like a formula that has the ginkgo biloba in it, but it also has a lot of other ingredients like phosphatidylserine, which has been shown over the years to really improve brain fog and cognitive function. It's called Brain Elevate. I wouldn't start with both products, maybe troubleshoot with one. Number four, something I learned not too long ago, our brain is a muscle, just like the muscles on our legs, our abdomen, which some of us don't have and our arms, those muscles need to be worked and exercised in order to improve or maintain their health. Our brain is the same way. A lot of people think that our brain has a cap on what we can remember, but guess what? We do only use a small percentage of our brain 
and there is plenty of room for everything that you want to remember. Jim Quick is an author and a brain coach that teaches speed reading and memory things. He says that we have what is called digital dementia. That blew my mind because guess what? I know I have it. How many of us don't bother remembering phone numbers anymore just because we don't have to? I put people's birthdays in my phone. I put their addresses in my phone, their email. You put everything in there. Also, all you have to do is Google it if you want to remember anything or look up anything. And it's a little scary because if you don't work that muscle to try and remember something, you may lose it. And that is why a lot of us are absent-minded or we might consider it brain fog because we can't remember things. It's because we're not trying to remember things. So a little practice that you might try to do is start remembering maybe phone numbers or birth dates. Just practice, work it every day for five to 10 minutes even. Just practice working on that brain muscle, trying to remember things. And the next time somebody asks you about a song from the 80s, don't look it up. Just try to remember. It's really funny because you may remember once you take your mind off of it and look at something different. And when you do that, it comes back to your mind. I know a lot of times I'll be doing a video and I notice that I look up to the sky or I look over to the left. It's it's almost like I'm looking for my thoughts and we do that. I would highly recommend checking out Jim Quick's book, Limitless, because I think that it will really change the way you think about exercising that muscle in your head. And I think it can give you a lot of improvement on memory loss, anything that you think might have to do with the brain. He's got a great list of all the foods that feed the brain, exercises that you can do. And it's a really great book. And I'm going to put that into the notes so that you can have that to look at also. The last thing, number five, that I want to mention, if all of the things that we've tried today do not bring improvement, then it just may be time to do a cleanse. That was what it required for me. When I was in menopause the first time, I thought that brain fog was just part of menopause. But then when I balanced my hormones and I got out of menopause, because I was only 30, and I used the progesterone cream to balance my hormones. I got out of menopause and all the other symptoms just went away except the brain fog, the brain fog, the lack of focus. I would be in the middle of having a conversation with someone and I would lose my train of thought. It was really embarrassing. So I did a lot of research and I also had some other health problems that I don't know if it was related to the hormonal journey, but I had developed fibromyalgia and lupus. Yay me. Is that the trifecta? I don't know. But once I started getting my health better hormonally, I did notice that the brain fog and some of the other things stuck around. So I jumped into cleansing. There are a couple of different cleanses that you can do. And one of them is specifically for candida, yeast, or fungus. Another one is parasites. A lot of us just don't even want to think about it. Parasites, that's third world countries and dogs, right? I mean, we worm our dogs, but when was the last time you wormed your child or yourself? Parasites are just like fungus. They take over their host. Our bodies are designed to keep those parasites and candida at bay, keep them under control all the time. But if you're under a lot of stress or you've had some health problems or you've been on some courses of maybe pharmaceutical products that lower the immune system, then the bad guys like yeast, candida, parasites those guys can actually get stronger and be more aggressive in the body, which causes a lot of symptoms. All right, we're going to get real now and talk about parasites for just a second. We have dogs, we garden, we do all the things that allow parasites into our body. If you have a dog that sleeps in your bed or climbs on the furniture, then you're probably at risk. So when we garden and we're outside, we're walking barefoot maybe, and we get dirt underneath our fingernails, we walk through dirt or grass with our bare feet. Those are some things that can actually open the door to those little fellas. So another place that we can get a parasitic problem is kids. 
if a child has pinworms, and I'm going to be a little graphic here, so prepare yourself. The pinworms, when they're ready to lay eggs and reproduce, they are going to go just outside of the anus, not inside, but just on the outside. And they produce a sticky substance. When they lay their eggs, they leave them there so that they can hatch. Guess what? If you have something crawling on you, or you have a little bit of itchiness going on, then you may know that that could be the case. You could have pinworms that are itching, but little kids, what do they do? They scratch and then they get them underneath their fingernails and then they go and they touch your face and they give you love or they put them in their own mouth. Either way, that is a very obvious way that they are sharing those little parasites with us. So just keep in mind, that's why we're supposed to wash our hands regularly because we come in contact with these things. But it's also why we want to keep our immune health up and our hormones balanced as much as we can. So now that I've grossed you out, there's hope. You can actually do parasite cleanses. You can do candida yeast cleanses. You can follow diets to starve them out and to not be such a great host for them, which is actually the game plan. You want to not be a good host in this case. These are all things that may be able to help you with brain fog, cognitive function, and just overall better thinking. Exercise the brain, hydrate, treat it like you would any other muscle. If you like this, please subscribe, like, and share.